Hey, this week's video initiates the shift in my educational videos to what I'm calling Spilling the Tea with Mary. We're moving from looking at the structure and function of municipal politics to discussing the salient issues raised by voters. For each issue area, I'm breaking down how the issue comes about and what's been done, and I'll wrap up by sharing how I think we can move forward. This week's video focuses on challenges and opportunities regarding land planning and development in Selwyn Township. I'll first deconstruct Ontario's housing affordability and supply chain crisis and the contention surrounding Ontario's newly instated Bill 109, the More Homes for Everyone Act. Next, I will discuss the different land use designations we have across Selwyn and how these affect our ability to develop. Then, taken together, we'll unpack these tensions surrounding housing and infrastructure development in the village of Lakefield and the challenges surrounding lot severance in Smith and Ennismore, and how these are expected to impact our township as a whole. Ready? Let's jump in. To begin, what is the current housing crisis in Ontario? The current issue in its most concise form is that Ontario is in a housing affordability and supply crisis. House prices in Ontario have almost tripled in the last 10 years and incomes have not kept pace. This means we're having a quickly growing population, but our development of living accommodations hasn't kept up. And the cherry on top is that most people are finding it very challenging to afford rent or to buy. Without enough places to live, we see bidding wars between buyers and sellers, which also pushes the prices of property up beyond the true market value. And that affects rent as well. We also see people moving from areas of the province with high property price tags to other areas of the province that are more affordable. This, for example, would be from the Greater Toronto Area to Peterborough and the Kawarthas. This was all happening before the pandemic. However, the pandemic has actually made this a much messier situation because the supply of building materials was slow during and between the lockdowns. This meant that building of new homes was slowed. Further, with inflation, we're also seeing rising costs of food and transportation. So even if people had money set aside for housing before, it's trickier now for many. Altogether, the different elements of this housing crisis are hindering the quality of life for many in Ontario. The question then is, what have we been doing about this? This hasn't been an overnight phenomenon, and the province has been working on this. In 2019, the province came out with a strategy called More Homes, More Choices, Ontario's Housing Supply Strategy Action Plan. And in 2020, Ontario saw 81,000 new housing build starts and 11 through rental starts. This was the highest since 1992, and this trend continued into 2021, where we saw 100,000 new housing starts and 13,000 new rental starts, altogether the highest in 30 years. However, even with these efforts underway, we still weren't meeting the demand. So in December 2021, the province established the Housing Affordability Task Force, a group of nine members composed of experts from financial institutions and the housing industry. This task force produced a report on February 8, 2022, which included 55 recommendations, all of which pointed to increasing the supply market of housing in Ontario. That is, it highly recommended the province, so the Premier and the Ministers, step in and require housing development to take top priority in our local communities. The task force made explicit that the most efficient way to do this was by overcoming red tape at the municipal level. This was to speed up logistics around planning and development. So in short, allowing for development where it was restricted or slowed in one capacity or another before. Following the task force recommendations on March 30th, 2022, the province announced the More Homes for Everyone plan, introduced as Bill 109, which was pushed through Ontario's legislature. And on April 14th, 2022, the More Homes for Everyone Act was passed into law. Altogether, while this in its most basic form makes sense and paints a pretty picture moving forward, for many involved in the planning and development of communities, this approach undermines important steps and actors who are involved to promote equity and fairness and act as a check on government systems. In turn, this approach has come to be seen as reshaping municipal agendas for the current and next councils in an unfair and undemocratic way. There are a number of elements that lend to the controversy surrounding this effort by the province, including environmental concerns, not enough labor or materials, unpaid public servants implementing development plans, and a lack of clarity in how the province intends to accomplish its goals. I won't go into all of them here due to keep this video short, but if you see me in person, I can explore these in more detail. For this video, I'm going to focus on how this law is affecting our local decision making and highlight the challenges we are seeing right now. For municipal councillors and staff of many municipalities, the expectations of the law are written from an urban perspective and expect all municipalities in Ontario to conform quickly 
And this means spending time and money to update and align bylaws and policies with provincial objectives and sidestep other important projects, even if municipalities have been working on those for a while and we know they're gonna better the quality of life for our residents. With this in a local perspective, we need to explore key elements in the hierarchy of land planning in Ontario. This includes official plans, zoning bylaws, land use classifications, and land use schedules. Each of these are important puzzle pieces that we need to wrap our heads around in order to understand how Bill 109 is impacting our local development. Let's start with the general flow of power and authority surrounding planning documents and the actors using them in Ontario. Recall from my previous videos, I explained that Selwyn Township is a lower tier municipality under the upper tier municipality of Peterborough County. This means our township has two political representatives, the Reeve and Deputy Reeve, who sit on Peterborough County Council and help make decisions about what development can and should look like across our eight diverse lower tier municipalities. Moving further up the ladder, Peterborough County Council's decisions cannot be put into practice until approved by Ontario's provincial government. For this to occur, there are a number of existing provincial pieces of legislation and actors involved in the approval process. Some of these are rigid, meaning they have to be followed closely, while others are more flexible, meaning they allow room for municipalities to make decisions that will best work for their communities to grow and operate. The most important piece of legislation regarding land use is the Planning Act, which provides guidelines to municipalities about how land planning and development is expected to occur in Ontario. For example, Peterborough County Council needs to align their development with the guidelines of the Planning Act in order for it to be approved and development to occur. The second important element we need to consider here are zoning bylaws. Under Peterborough County's official plan, each of the eight lower tier municipalities, including Selwyn Township, produce and operate their own zoning bylaws, which align with both the Planning Act and the county's official plan. A zoning bylaw is a document that gives townships legal authority to regulate how land and buildings are used on specific parcels or classifications of land. As a resident of a township, you might engage with these documents when applying for permits to build or update a home. The last two important pieces here are the land use classification and schedules. A land use classification is a designation of land those both privately owned by residents and business owners, and those publicly owned by the government. Municipalities in turn create land use schedules or maps of how the land in their boundaries is classified and use these maps when deciding what can be developed, where, when, and how. These classifications are housed under Canada's land inventory and have been used historically to protect land from development. Today, these are used to inform the province and Peterborough County's official plans when deciding where and when to transform land from one state to another. It's important here to note that research in the last 50 years has secured us in this classification system because we realize that when we develop land in certain ways and capacities, those processes do not allow us to reverse the development or restricts uh, the different ways we can develop the land in the future. Land classification and schedules are revised and updated as needed to ensure we are thinking ahead and protecting as much land as possible. Recently, the province has updated its benchmarks of each of the different land classifications. In turn, the province requires municipalities to update their land use schedules or maps to demonstrate these changes on the ground. Peterborough County's 2022 official plan, the one we're waiting for approval on, includes the most recently updated land use schedules for our area. For reference, the last schedule was approved in 2008, and until we receive approval from um, the new plan, we're still working off the 2008 metrics, which many argue are outdated. Here I'm showing part of Selwyn's new schedule. This document is publicly accessible on Peterborough County's website alongside all the other schedules for all the other lower tier municipalities of, of Peterborough County. Selwyn's schedule is 13 pages long and has two other pages of transportation schedules if you're interested. For time's sake, I'm gonna focus on page three and seven. Page three, here we're looking at a portion of Ennismore and Smith, which includes the causeway and bridge north. For reference, looking to the right side, you can see the red outline indicates where this portion of the schedule falls within Selwyn Township. Above is the legend of the different types of land classifications, and the most common colors we actually see on the map indicate agriculture, natural core area, residential, rural, and waterfront residential. The wards of Ennismore and Smith cover the majority of the land in our township. You can see that both are predominantly classified as agriculture, rural, or natural core area land. 
This designation reflects the makeup of the soil on that land and expected uses on top of that soil. Specifically, soil composition is important for maintaining the integrity of agricultural production and environmental resources in Canada. Why is this important? The agricultural sector contributes significantly to the Canadian economy. One in eight jobs is from the ag sector, and we need agriculture to feed our populations and those abroad. This situates Canada as a key player internationally because we produce food that cannot be produced elsewhere or in such a large volume. In the last century, however, development has dwindled our agricultural land to only about 5% of the land in Ontario. So theoretically, planners and decision makers have said we need to protect agriculture, natural core areas, and rural land against development and preserve its integrity to get the most out of it while we still can. Now, looking at page seven, we have the rural settlement of Lakefield. Here you can see the more common land classifications are rural, natural core area, and residential. When considered together, the province's expectations for developing more houses and updating the classifications under Peterborough County's 2022 official plan together present conflicting approaches to development in our area. The province wants to see about 2,000 more homes built in Selwyn by 2030, but we basically have no land under the current classification to build those units. Further, the province is asking our municipality to deal with those conflicts without any guidance, and this poses different challenges and benefits to each of the wards in our township. Recall the historical tensions I mentioned in the first video regarding how wards were forced to come together in 1998 and 2001? These tensions have divided our wards and communities on some issues, and when we discuss land development, there really is this us versus them approach, and it's ingrained in our larger debates, but when we talk about land development, it becomes even more sticky, because the different land classifications found in each ward means decisions have to be tailored to each ward. And this means we have to talk about what they can and cannot do, not what they want to do. In turn, prospects for building homes or expanding commercial spaces does look different across the wards. However, on a commonality across the voter groups, so those supporting development and those protesting it, and everybody in between, um, we all have these concerns about the province's expectations affecting our municipal tax bills in the future. At the moment, this impact is unclear. Okay, let's put this into perspective. On one hand, the wards of Smith and Ennismore are designated under the 2008 and 2022 land schedules as rural and agricultural land. And under these titles, development is heavily restricted. This is problematic for many properties with large acreage that is not used for agricultural activities. So think wooded lots for maintain lots. Some of these residents are looking to sever and sell or provide land for their families to build because housing is expensive but we cannot do this under the current classifications. On the other hand, we have under 20% of Selwyn's populations in the village of Lakefield, a condensed rural settlement with existing urban infrastructure. Lakefield settlement already has land designated for development. This is known as Lakefield South, located behind the speed skating oval and adjacent to the fairgrounds. A copy of the 2003 servicing phasing map is shown here for reference. This was established in 2003, made up of nine privately owned lots located in Lakefield Ward, to expand Lakefield as the larger settlement area. It's about 370 acres and the lands are to be developed for residential and small scale commercial areas, a road network and parks and open space. However, we're missing some key details here, which will impact decisions around what development could look like, decisions the next council will be making. First, Peterborough County is expecting a 31% population increase in Selwyn Township by 2031, an increase projected from the 2006 census. Coupled with the expectation of 2,000 more homes in Selwyn, we know that 900 of those will be in Lakefield alone. This means the distribution of land development is already forecasted to be unfair across the wards. By this, I mean all wards will likely have their feathers ruffled because the challenges and changes are coming fast and we have limited time to think or act. And we have even less time for residents' input. Overall, a less democratic approach, in my opinion. Further, in Lakefield South, the 900 units will be compressed so this means the appearance of the section of the community will look much different from elsewhere in Lakefield, a real physical change. Think townhouses or row housing, limited street parking, possibly no driveways or even lawns. I'm literally picturing certain new areas in the greater Toronto area, very compressed. And the infrastructure is gonna to have to be expanded and updated to adequately provide healthy and safe services to those denser populations. 
Further, if development is not spread out in a more fair manner, areas like Lakefield that are more built up will likely see more services being added. And if you recall from my previous video on how property taxes are decided, municipalities do try to be fair and only charge residents using certain services for those services. However, it's likely that the next council is going to have to make cuts or raise taxes to accommodate the tax that, sorry, to accommodate the cost of those fast and hard changes because these changes were not accounted for in the township's previous annual operating budget or capital budgets. So in the long term, it's likely that Lakefield will see more facilities built and services provided to those condensed populations and Smith and Ennismore will not see as much development. Under the county's official plan submission to the province, Peterborough County Council has asked the province to allow for two lots to be severed per 100 acres, up from the one lot per 100 acres we currently have in place. There's also a time period that property owners have to wait between asking for severances. The county has also asked for this time range to be shortened, and this would allow for some development in the wards of Smith and Ennismore. I have many feelings about this current situation, but here's my top concerns. On the one hand, I personally believe in maintaining agricultural land and natural core areas. We have so many benefits from these resources and types of land, seen and unforeseen in the short and long term. So I really feel we need to preserve them, especially with so little left. So in theory, I do agree with the approach of creating and using land use schedules for protection. On the other hand, however, not all the land classification and land parcels on those schedules truly reflect soil composition and the potential of that land. These schedules are created from aerial imaging, so think GPS. And while this imagery has improved greatly since 2008, some of the lots when you visit in person don't align with those on the map. For example, when visited in person and on the ground, you see specific trees such as cedars, which signal more acidic soil composition and poor drainage. Or the tree cover on the map hides the shallow bedrock underneath. Both are key deterrents for agricultural production. Further, mapping in this capacity is a tedious venture, and there is not enough time, money, or human bodies available to create these maps and check every single parcel in person. So theoretically, they are not accurate, and in my opinion, this means the schedules are not adequately suitable for making the fast-paced development decisions the province wants our municipality to make. But they are helpful tools, and should still be used in a step, as a step in a process. By this I mean if someone wants to build, there should be an on-site classification inspection by the township staff with that specialization. I'm not pointing to extensive parcel inspections woven in with other types of inspections just to check on the process that would help ensure the schedules are correct and landowners are given a fair chance at the severance if they want it. Collectively, the province approves the county's requests, and if they do, this, in my opinion, will be beneficial for Smith and Ennismore. We will see some development in more controlled and spaced manner, not suburbs. But you will see more detached single homes with large one-acre lots dotting the rows and the edges of our farm fields, and well-spaced in between. We are already seeing the suburb development creeping outward from Peterborough. If we take this approach, it's more likely we can keep the spacing between housing development over a long period of time, protecting land and the natural heritage while allowing for development but if this doesn't pass, I propose we lobby the provincial government to reconsider our zoning classifications and schedule in our township, and perhaps Peterborough County broadly. Councillors can do this through the conferences they attend each year with the province. Additionally, if we find enough common ground, if we truly ignite the spark, other lower tiers of Peterborough County could join our cause and fuel the fire. This isn't new, but it hasn't gotten far before because we haven't had the champions that we needed. And it's almost too late, so we need to act. We have much to retain, but we also have to grow, and we can't do this in a respectful manner under the conflict-driven approach of the current provincial government. We have to step in and substantiate our vision, prove that there is a compromise and a better way to approach the growth of our communities. Additionally, the province's expectations will likely drive deeper divisions between our communities, and councillors will have to be the ones making the compromises in order to appease to both those that they represent and the province. This could divide councils as well. And this could lead to inaction or longer drawn out decision-making, which we're already seeing. We need to curb these tensions. And I suggest we do this through long-term strategic planning. Everybody has to be on board. Coming out of COVID, the timing is right and we need to hit the ground running. We need to request funding from bodies like the federal and provincial government, whose recent budgets have allocated money to such development partnerships. 
This means if we have funders contributing a good portion to our projects, it's likely that property taxes and ratepayer wallets won't be hit as hard or fast in the chaotic fashion that we're anticipating. For example, under the federal government's recent budget, there is to be $10 billion provided under the National Housing Strategy to support affordable housing, and $2.9 billion of that is for Ontario alone. We need to tap into that, and it's cost shared. Additionally, with the suggested 31% population increase and the housing crisis still happening, this suggests an increase in homelessness across our communities. We need to plan proactively. We can situate our township as a necessary benefactor and partner of both the federal and provincial government and leverage them to follow through on their promises. We want to see the quality of life increased, not hindered. And if we have a plan, we're more likely to get the support and partnership we need for the short, medium and long term. I just want to point out a couple more important details that put this issue into perspective. First, the Township of Selwyn is the most populated municipality in the County of Peterborough, with an approximate population of 18,600. In turn, we have about one third of all the households in the county and approximately 34% of the workforce. While agriculture does take up a large chunk of our land use, retail and tourism are key facets supporting the comforts we see in our community and the growth of it. And the home-based business sector has been growing before and after COVID, meaning people are happy to be here and able to work from home. Not all communities can offer that. Selwyn is already a leader in the County of Peterborough and in the development challenges we are facing, the next council has to be well equipped to dig our heels in and not let the province push us around. We can't miss this opportunity for the future. We need a council that is aware of these issues, considers the delicate dynamics of our communities, thinks in an innovative way and is not afraid to stand up for ourselves. Development happens in one way or another, whether we like it or not. As a candidate for Ennismore Ward Councillor position, I'm putting my name forward as a young, innovative, and well-educated and experienced individual who wants to see the best for everyone in our township. Voting in Selwyn Township 2022 Municipal Election is open between October 11th and 24th, and you can vote online or by phone once you receive your personalized pin in the mail. Please vote for me, Mary Coolis, for the position of Ennismore Ward Councillor so we can take this challenge head on. I'm ready for it. Let's be proactive and shape the progress we want to see. Thanks for watching. I hope this information has been helpful. Did you like the content? Over the course of my campaign, I'll be releasing more short videos diving into the important facets of municipal government and politics in our township. The goal is to educate others, make municipal politics more engaging, and promote my campaign ahead of the 2022 Selwyn Township election. Want to know more about what I have to offer? Add a comment. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to make others aware.